Hey, this is Josh Beatler with the Guitar Player School. In this video, we're going to be going over the 10 guitar habits that are holding you back from becoming the guitar player that you want to be. This is really important, especially if you're in the beginner or intermediate stages. And there's a couple in there that might surprise you, so be sure to stick around till the end. For the best guitar tips and tricks when it comes to improvising, soloing, technique, ear training, and more, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, leave a like and a comment, and check back every Tuesday for new videos. All right, so who is this video for? It's really geared a lot more towards beginner guitarists, but there might be intermediate and advanced players out there that could benefit from this as well. Be sure to share it with some friends that have been trying to learn guitar and they really feel like they don't have the talent or they're struggling, because learning guitar is an uphill battle. There's a lot of challenges that come with it, but there's certain things that a lot of people do in the beginning that really hold back their progress and they're things that can be avoided. They're things that I teach my students all the time, especially my experienced students that come and they have all these bad habits and they can't figure out why they can't improve. So we're gonna go over those right now. Okay, tip number one, you're likely holding the guitar wrong. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't play guitar really well by holding it in, in incorrect ways. There are lots of great players that hold that can play really well and they don't hold the guitar the way I'm about to show you, but that doesn't mean that, especially as a beginner, you wanna make things as easy as possible, so why not do it correct from the beginning? Okay, so what most people do is you'll see them put the guitar on their right leg and you see them hold it like this. And the thing about that is that, um, well, your guitar is sitting across your body, your fretting hand has to reach across, and that causes all sorts of issues because you're sitting asymmetrically. So you end up punching over your guitar, you end up tilting the guitar, you end up doing all these really weird things that actually mess you up physically. So ideally, you wanna have a guitar strap, hold the guitar in the center of your body with the neck at a 45 degree angle so that your hand can do its job properly and you don't have to reach asymmetrically across. You don't have to twist your body in any weird ways. That's tip number one. All right, tip number two is that your fretting hand, you're likely setting up your wrist wrong. So when I teach my students this, this is the first thing I teach my beginner students because if you do this part correctly, playing guitar can become a lot easier and if you do it incorrectly, playing guitar becomes a lot more difficult. Okay, so I want you to imagine that you're holding a taco and you, I'm gonna turn my hand around here. You really want the thumb to be in line with the middle finger and ring finger like a cupping motion. And then what you do is you just raise your hand up and you'll notice that the thumb is still in line with the middle and ring finger, but I'm not gonna wrap it over the top. It needs to rest back here and the wrist should be in a relaxed down position. You almost never wanna wrap your thumb up over the top like this. And the reason being is because it completely destroys your finger's ability to move in the way that they need to. If you're setting your hand up down like this, you're gonna notice that you can do these really wild stretches even if you're a total beginner, even if you're an adult who has never played in their entire life, you're gonna notice that your fingers have a lot more mobility because you're setting up the hand right. So I strongly suggest, especially as a total beginner, not only are you holding the guitar correctly, but then you just do a couple warm-up sets where you just set your hand up correctly with the thumb, again, in line with the middle and ring finger, over and over again, so that this becomes the first thing you do every single time you pick up the guitar. Uh, tip number three, it actually has nothing to do with playing. It might actually just be your guitar that's making things more difficult. So there's certain things about the guitar that you can have a professional or if you're really handy, you can adjust. The action, the action is how high the strings are above the neck. The higher the strings are, the more you have to press down. Now in the beginning, it's easier to have lighter gauge strings that are lower and closer to the fretboard because you don't have to squeeze as hard. And a lot of beginners, they get a hand-me-down guitar, or they get like a cheap junker guitar, and they wonder why they're struggling. It's because the guitar itself is really getting in the way of the learning process. So if you do have a guitar and you've never had what's called a setup, be sure to take it to a local guitar luthier. A reasonable setup should be no more than 30 to $50 dollars. Um, if it's just a standard guitar or an acoustic, if it needs lots of work, if it's an old guitar that's been sitting in an attic forever and they're gonna tell you, oh, you know, this is gonna be $80, $90, it might just be better to get a brand new guitar entirely. But string action is critical and makes it a lot easier to learn in the beginning. Tip number four, a lot of my students in the beginning, they pick incorrectly. So I'm gonna turn a little bit and you're gonna see my picking hand right here. When they pick a string, they pick out like this. They send their hand flying out into space. And what this does is it makes your hand have no idea where it is. So then you have to look and find your way back. In a perfect world, what you wanna do, especially when you're learning how to pick individual strings, is you wanna do what's called a rest stroke. And a rest stroke is when you pick straight down 
and then the pick stops on the next string. Now you won't always do this 100% of the time, but what this is doing is this is keeping your pick right in the string cavity right here so that you can feel where your hand is at all times instead of having to guess every time you jump out here. So if you know a simple melody like happy birthday or smoke on the water or any sort of beginner lesson, be sure to train your picking hand to stay right on the strings. Pick straight through to the next string so it stops so that your right hand learns where it is at all times. Okay, tip number five. Your fretting hand is probably pressing down on the wrong spots. So whenever you play a single note, you want the tip of your finger to be trying to get as close to the next fret as possible. So this is the fifth fret right here. I'm not gonna squeeze in the middle and I'm not gonna squeeze at the back of the fret. I'm gonna try and squeeze like almost right on top of the metal before crossing over into the sixth fret. This is called the sweet spot and it requires the least amount of pressure to create a note. It's actually a lot lighter than you think it is. Uh, a lot of beginners struggle with a lot of things because they're overcompensating, they're squeezing way too hard. And while some of that is due to the fact that their fingers are just kind of mushy because they haven't really developed any calluses yet, they're also just pressing in the wrong spots. So this is true for chords too. It's just a little bit more difficult to get all your fingers on a sweet spot when you're mashing them all into different frets, but you do the best you can. You wanna press down on the sweet spot. Okay, similar to a previous tip, a lot of students when they're strumming in the beginning, they're using like their, their forearm. They're, it's almost like they're punching the guitar and they're smashing right through it. And they also do that same motion where they strum and sweep away. It shouldn't be like that. What you want you to do is you want your pick to just set up on the string it needs to, and then just fall. You're gonna use a little bit of wrist and a little bit of forearm, but you're mostly using gravity. And what you're gonna get is a nice even sound. And not only that, but your pick is gonna stay right where it needs to. It's not gonna fly out into space. So you should hear you hit every string, okay? So be sure when you're learning how to strum, especially on the downstrokes, to just let the weight of the arm fall. On the upstroke, what you wanna do is, it's kinda of like a paintbrush motion, where you turn the wrist back and just pull it back up through the strings. So you've got this kinda of twisting motion, but you're not clenching. It's not a punch. It's just a relaxed, and this is something that, you know, you'll get better with over time, but it's a big tip that I see people, they, don't, this is in reference to a previous one, but if you're holding the guitar right and you're setting up your wrist correctly, you should be a lot more relaxed when you play. So you wanna be checking, are you clenching your face? Are you clenching your teeth? Are you locking up your shoulders and your neck and your wrist? And A lot of people when they're beginning to play, they're using every muscle in their body to try and do something that requires only the fingers because you're thinking so hard about it and you're holding your breath and you're, Gah! And you, you really don't need to. So what you wanna be doing is every 30, 40 seconds, just check and be like, okay, am I, am I locking up anything in my body? And just do a quick relax, take a couple deep breaths, be sure to drink lots of water, and make sure you're not locking up anything extra. Again, this is something you become sensitive to the longer you play, but you wanna catch it in the beginning and not after you've been playing for two or three years and now it's built into your nervous system, okay? So try and be as relaxed as possible while you play. Don't get frustrated when you make mistakes. Don't get tense up, because if you make a mistake and tense up, you're, it's gonna cause you to make another mistake, which is gonna cause you to tense up, which causes you to get frustrated, which causes you to make mistakes, and it's just a negative spiral. Enjoy the process. You will get better with consistency. Just try and stay relaxed and enjoy it. When I see my students working on things that are brand new to them, let's say they get the first section down and now they're working on the second section. For whatever reason, they seem to think that if you make a mistake in the second section of whatever it is you're working on, you need to start over from the beginning and that's a big waste of time. If you're working on a two-part lesson and you already got the first part memorized and you can do it consistently, just practice the part that you need work on. And then once you can do the second part correctly, you put the two pieces together. So for example, um, let's say I'm doing, uh, let's say I'm doing Amazing Grace. If you can do every time, but you mess up on the second half, 
don't worry about the first half, just work on the second half. Then put it back in. When you're first learning things on guitar, you have to learn it in pieces. You learn the first piece, you learn the second piece, you put those pieces together. You learn the third piece, you learn the fourth piece, you put those pieces together. Then you take the first half, pieces one and two, second half, pieces three and four, then you put those halves together. Your brain learns in chunks, use that to your advantage, then put everything together afterward. It's gonna be practicing a lot easier, you're gonna see a lot more progress more quickly, and you won't be as frustrated. This is again a practicing trip. Um, People usually just pick up their guitar and go. They don't go into a practice session thinking, okay, what do I wanna get better at today? What have I been having trouble with? What do I enjoy playing? So I strongly suggest beginner students, uh, I'm gonna have a lot more videos on practicing, but as just a basic rule, start with something easy that you can do consistently, an easy warm up to kind of get your brain into playing. This could be something new that you've learned, excuse me, this can be uh, an easy song that you know, or an easy strumming pattern that you know. Get your brain warmed up into playing. After you've done your warm up and you feel good about it, then you get in right into something that's new and more challenging to you because you will only grow if you're tackling the things that you find challenging. Then what you wanna do is go back and review older material, but you don't wanna just kind of dive into this um, freestyle. You want to kind of plan out your practice sessions. So a practice journal and keeping track of what you've been working on and then proactively planning your time and practice sessions will give you the most results because you're approaching it more like a scientist as opposed to just a hobbyist. Now that doesn't mean you have to be a serious musician to make results, but if it's something that's important to you, you should plan. You know, that's the old adage, um, uh, failing to plan is planning to fail. So if you plan your practice sessions, you're gonna get a lot more out of them than if you just pick up the guitar and wing it. All right, so thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, leave a comment below, let me know which tip helped you the most, which ones are applicable to you. Be sure to share this with any guitar playing friends of yours, I'm sure they'll get a lot out of it. Check back every single Tuesday for new videos and I really hope you enjoyed this video. This is Josh with the Guitar Player School. Practice, rock on.